Hey, I just wanted to record a quick video to kind of walk through how I built this bed slide. Um, I've found a lot of good ideas off of YouTube, uh, but I haven't seen anything that matches this in terms of ease of build, low deck height, lightweight, strength, durability, and simplicity. Um, and so I thought I would post this to hopefully give other people ideas. Um, so, um, I guess really quickly, this is actually my second bed slide that I've built. I previously welded one out of um, a rectangular aluminum tube um, and it worked really well. Uh, I had it in my last truck for five years until I sold my truck. Uh, I learned a lot from it. Um, I ultimately decided to go with 8020 because um, I wanted to be able to tweak my design overall. And as I'll kind of walk through, I have a couple of like the, the brackets that I have on the side of the truck add a lot of utility to this particular design. And I, I really wanted the flexibility um, that 8020 offers to be able to change things up after you've already installed it. And maybe you get a new thing or you wanna like adjust the width or something like that. With 8020, it's pretty easy to do. Um, and I, you know, I still have a welder. I, I could have welded another one up. Um, but I decided to go this route, and so far it seems to have worked pretty well. I've had the side brackets in place for quite a while now. I want to say five or six months. Um, but I just finished building the bed slide itself. Um, so we'll see how that holds up. Uh, looking at how it is and, and feeling it, I think it's more than robust. Um, but if anything changes, I'll, I'll post about that. Um, so what else? I, I guess a few things that I was going for, like why, why I didn't buy a commercial um, bedside. One, I, I wanted it to be a very particular size um, and I wanted the flexibility to be able to either mount things to it or um, uh, like whether to the sidewalls or to the bed itself and to be able to change things up as I needed. Um, and uh, in the future, I may put kennels like kind of on an upper level near the back of my cab, or I may actually put them uh, as a platform across the top. So my bed slide will go underneath of it. Um, and that kind of flexibility, um, it, it's just a lot better, I think, to um, if you've built the whole thing yourself, you can kind of modify anything as needed. This probably is a bit cheaper than buying something. Um, especially relative to how well um, this is built and how solid it is, uh, I think you're going to get a lot better value for the money. Um, uh, the other thing about the commercial solutions is that most of them have like a super high deck height. Um, some of the low deck options I think are like three and a half inches um, and some of the like heavyweight full extension ones I think are four and a half or five inches tall. Um, and if you're trying to really save that vertical space, so for some people that might not matter at all. And if that's the case for you, great. But for a lot of people, um, if you're either trying to get under your lift gate or in my case, um, building a platform across the top, like in my last truck I had, I could basically uh, fill the top level of my truck um, with platforms to put kind of bigger, bulkier stuff up top and then use my bed slide almost as a drawer system. Um, and uh, it, in that case, like three quarters of an inch can be the difference in between a lot of totes or whatever you have fitting underneath it or, or like hardly any. And, and so I, I was really trying to find something that has a pretty low deck height. This design, I think you can get it down below an inch. I, I'm reusing a couple of uh, roller wheels for my last build and so they're a little bit bigger than I need um, and that raises the deck height up to for this it's probably an inch and a quarter I think I haven't exactly measured it and it's a little bit higher towards the tailgate than it is the front of the cab um, uh, but like it's it's pretty low uh, and it's still super strong um, what else um, so I think I'll just walk you through it I'm not sure if there's any other kind of broader points I wanted to hit so, um, in general, it's a pretty simple layout. The, the frame of the, the slide component, uh, three of the sides are made out of 
one and a half inch by three inch. I, I'm probably going to call this 8020 most of the time, even though I bought this from McMaster Car and it's not branded 8020. If you search for T slot or aluminum T slot extrusion or something like that, you'll see a similar kind of profile. Um, and you basically you can slide fasteners down here and bolt things to it, and, and they're kind of like um, an erector set or something for adults. Um, super strong. In retrospect, um, the inch and a half series, so it comes in a couple of different uh, series, like this right here is a one inch profile. And so you can get it in like one by one, one by two, one by three, one by four, et cetera. This is uh, one and a half by three. So you can get this, like this is one and a half by one and a half. Um, this inch and a half profile is plenty strong for this application. If I was in a mid-size truck, I would definitely go down to the one inch profile, but I would still try and get at least a three inch tall side rib. So like one inch wide by three, or if I could find it four inch tall. Uh, I'm not sure if anyone makes that kind of profile, but um, most of the strength here doesn't come from like the webbing thickness or the width. It really comes from the beam height. And so the higher, like the deeper you make that beam, the stronger it's gonna be. And um, with the exception of lateral loads, um, if you're using a three inch tall by one inch uh, setup here, it's gonna be very similar in strength to this one and a half inch profile, even though there's a lot more material uh, here. But nonetheless, uh, if, you're, if you're in an F-250 like I am, uh, and you have the weight capacity to spare, you might wanna go with the heavier duty stuff. Um, just to overbuild it a little bit, but you don't really have to. Pulling this out, um, the the corner fasteners were the part that um, maybe I'm least satisfied with. These are very, very strong. Uh, so there's two bolts on each side and they pull things into a 90 degree. Um, the only issue is that it you, you kind of, you run into a, a, a problem with your platform material and fastening in the bolts once you close it together. Um, it's kind of ugly, uh, but for my use, it'll be perfectly functional. Um, I use the same kind of things up at the front of the bed, except they're double high, so they use all three inch worth of height. And once you really lock those down, um, they're extremely robust. I also put some Loctite glue in them uh, so they don't vibrate loose. Um, and then the platform itself, uh, I'm moving uh, in a couple of weeks so I was trying to get rid of material that I had rather than buying anything new. And I happened to have this sheet of half inch plywood. Um, and I, I slipped it in there to see how it would work. And I was surprised at how strong it was. Um, so I just decided to go with that um, as one big piece. Um, I can actually stand, I can put one foot uh, in the middle of this and stand on it. And I feel it flex quite a bit but it's definitely not gonna break and it's definitely not gonna slip out. Um, if I were to rebuild this though, I'd probably go with three quarter of an inch uh, plywood. My original design, I was gonna go with three quarter inch plywood, but then put two ribs midway through the deck. Um, the ribs might actually be functional and those ribs I would make out of the, uh, the square profile. Um, they might add some extra functionality uh, that could be useful to you, but I don't think they're needed from a strength perspective. Um, they'll definitely in increase the strength because you'll be able to slide the the plywood, like you'll have a, a, a much smaller unsupported span of plywood. Um, and so that will definitely improve the strength, but I really don't think it's needed. And and so to, uh, to actually install the wood, it's not screwed in here at all. I just, um, same idea as this wall that I have built here. I routed uh, uh, the the edge of it so that it will fit down here. This one I had to route more obviously to fit in the one inch profile. And the the T slot is a little bit wider for the inch and a half. Um, and so I, I did that to the whole platform here and was able to just slide it in. I did the same at the front and the back. Um, so it's kind of like wedged in there on all four sides and it's really surprisingly strong. Um, I, and then I, I guess talking about the actual mechanism itself, 
this is the part that I think is the most unique uh, compared with um, what I see on YouTube right now. Um, there's a lot of builds that have like a lot of bearings, but not necessarily in the right place. And you really only need four. Um, so I have, I'm just lifting up my slide. Um, so I have uh, this uh, uh, roller bearing. Sorry, I'm holding up the slide at the same time as working the camera. Um, I have this, uh, I think this is one and three eighths or one and a half inch and it's mounted on a axle here. And these are just um, aluminum angle. Um, and uh, that's really all you need for the, the tailgate end of the bed slide. And that, uh, that roller just slides along that side rail, um, nickety split. And then I'll take you around to the pull this out. All right. So um, you you really only on on the slide itself you only need the two um, two other uh, roller wheels. These ones though. Um, you need a different style. Uh, these are one and three eighths diameter. You could go smaller, but on, on this end, it actually doesn't matter that much because you control the, the deck height just by where you screw this, uh, the mounting point. And basically this roller wheel is on a shoulder bolt that I um, am using this uh, half inch thick aluminum angle. So this is just like a three inch, three inch by three inch aluminum angle that I then cut down because uh, I didn't need the full three inch extension and then drilled four holes and those are just bolted to the 8020. And then this wheel, uh, when there's downward weight on it, uh, it rolls on this uh, three eighths thick flat bar and then I have the same flat bar up above and um, the gap here, I would say ideally is probably a 16th of an inch or maybe an eighth of an inch. I have a little bit more there right now by the looks of things. Um, but that way when it, when it, um, when you have weight on the other end, it'll, um, that upper rail will hold this end of the bed slide down. And so you can put several hundred pounds out on the end and this will be more than secure. The thing that I did on my last uh, bed slide was I also had um, uh, roller wheels that um, contained the, the lateral movement of the slide. So if, if you're parked like on a, on a side hill and so your truck is at an angle, the bed slide will want to kind of come out and go to the side. And so you need a way to contain it. In this particular design, I just built it to much tighter tolerances. And because I have this like wall around the sides, um, I just, uh, I'm just using aluminum on aluminum basically, um, to keep it straight. And that seems to be working fine. I definitely have to put a little bit more muscle into moving the, the slide in and out. Um, but it's really not that much and it doesn't, it's not like when you add more weight that gets worse, um, or at least not materially. Uh, and so... Um, I think that's going to work pretty well. I haven't had any problems with it so far. What I might do if it does turn into a problem is uh, you can actually, from 8020, you can get uh, like uh, low friction plastic bearing surfaces that mount into the T-slot. The and so I might kind of wedge that in there. And so it's then, it'll then be like plastic on aluminum, uh, like a, a bearing plastic on aluminum. And that if I if I need that at all, I think that'll work. Um, and that's that's kind of the core, like what made makes the slide slide. Uh, the other thing that I'll show you here is a bit of a work in progress. 
I have this pin mechanism for locking the bed slide in and out and, and at intermediary points. This is just a four, probably a four inch uh, eye bolt that's a quarter inch thick. Um, I have a screw kind of containing this spring so that I can pull it in and out. I realized that this uh, pin though um, isn't strong enough for how big that gap is. So I might actually try and close up that gap a little bit so there's not such a big kind of unsupported section for the pin. And I might um, dr just drill these holes out bigger and go with like maybe a 3 8 pin uh, or something like that. And the way I have this rigged up, I'll, I'll show the other end of this. I have a piece of triangular aluminum that I have this cable routed to, a pivot point on this end, and then I have another piece of cable here. And that other piece goes to a handle on the tailgate end that I can then pull and it basically pulls the, the pin out uh, from here. And that seems to work pretty well. The other thing I'll show while I'm in the bed here is, is how this all comes together on this end. Um, so I'm, I'm using just the factory mounting points uh, for these side brackets. Um, so my, I, I'm, I'm mounting to my topper here and then um, the, the back end here is free and then I mount them back here. I basically put a piece of flat bar across the full bulkhead of my bed and then there's a factory bolt that mounts the whole bed to the frame right here. I just slipped a piece of uh, angle uh, aluminum under there and then mounted everything else to that angle aluminum. And that works really well. So I have this 8020 is held down by that. And then I have the rails that the wheels go on mounted there. Um, and it's a, it's a pretty good like no drill situation. In my last truck, I used rib nuts all throughout the bed. I'm not afraid to drill holes in the bed, but what I found over time with the rib nuts is that um, they would start slipping. Like occasionally I would need to take one out or something like that and the bolt um, uh, the bolts had started to corrode into the rib nuts and so as you started to loosen them uh, the rib nut would actually slip um, not always but there was like a high enough failure rate and just they're kind of a pain in, pain in the butt to install that I decided to go a different direction this time um, and so I'll, I'll just kind of very quickly show you what else is going on here so I have a refrigerator freezer built in here. It's on a platform. And then under the platform, I have a 100 amp hour lithium battery. Through this side, I have a heater, a diesel heater. And then I have all of my high amperage uh, DC stuff against, uh, like mounted on the wall on the other side. So if I need to get at that, I just have to take out um, this refrigerator, which is pretty quick and easy to do. And then I built this big cabinet just recently uh, that has some miscellaneous storage, one drawer for my kitchen, and then uh, a bigger, deeper drawer that I use to store other hunting equipment. Real quick, this as well is the um, handle mechanism I was mentioning. I can't actually show it articulate because the pin is bent on the other end, but basically I just have one pivot point pin and another so this one is, uh, the bar can slip around, but it's mounted rigidly to the uh, 8020. This one um, as well is mounted the same way, but I have a, like a longer slot uh, kind of milled out uh, of the aluminum bar. And so that way there's like a controlled amount of um, movement that this thing can do. And then I have this steel cable mounted to that triangular piece of aluminum that I mentioned up there. Um, and so that way you have like a, a fairly simple spring-loaded pin mechanism. I need to make some refinements on it, but I think the basic design works. So I hope I've covered everything. Um, if you have any questions, let me know. If you have any suggestions, also uh, post those in the comments, either for myself or other people that might use the same design. Um, I am pretty sure this is gonna work well for me. I know the, the side brackets will work really well and I like the basic layout. Like in my last build, in my last truck, having the, the side brackets as well as the bed slide was super handy. Um, 
those the the space beside the the bedside was as useful in some ways as the bedside itself. There's lots of kind of odds and ends that you can fit into um, uh, certain spaces uh, that that they're super useful for. Um, and and the way this goes together right now, I can tell, despite the fact it's not welded together, it's going to be super robust. Uh, if I do run into any issues, I'll, I'll try and post those. Um, but again, if you have questions, comments, um, please post them. Thanks.